Hey, uh, if you read the title, then you know what this is about. This is a perfect game in Blind Random Arena. Now, for those of you who don't know what Blind Random Arena is, this is using my random pack generator, which differs slightly from the original uh, in Super Auto Pets. You can look at my first of these videos or my video on the program for details on that. But, um, oh, there's my first win of 10 here. Now, this isn't the only game I'll show, but it's probably the most interesting. Now, I was, I was pretty stoked to have this run, because I've probably done less than 50 of these at this point. And you're going to see, I'm, just, I'm not going to stop winning, ever. Uh, which makes for a little bit of a lack of drama, but you see, I'm getting my favorite type of start in Super Auto Pets, which is a possum start. I'm going to sell two possums here onto a beluga sturgeon which works out quite well. A 4-5 summons a 2-3, and then I get another 2-3 that summons a 2-3. That's really nice tempo for a turn 3. Plus the Moth and Royal Flycatcher here is going to be useful, I think, almost every turn, which is funny. Most times I grab anything that's like a summon counter. Like, if I grab an Aardvark, you know I'm not seeing a single summon pet. But we win that pretty handedly, don't even need to let the Royal Flycatcher attack, and now we're getting Lizard, which is probably the single best tempo pet for turn two. Or for, sorry, for tier two. You can see I'm gonna have a lizard level up saved, and after this battle you'll see I get a uh, sturgeon level up as well. And we win that one by even more. And yeah, we've got the beluga sturgeon. Level up gives us hippo squirrel. Level up hippo crow. I'm gonna grab both hippos. And that hippo is going to carry us through the rest of this match. As you'll see here, yet another summon team. And I've got two summon countering pets. Um, now my hippo's not yet strong enough to do a real number, but my beluga, or my royal flycatcher is going to pick up the slack. You see, I grab that hippo. And I really don't know what I'm looking for here. Um, but uh, I'm going to get a fig, I'm going to get two baboons, and I know I'm going to be stacking that. And fig on hippo is a really fantastic thing, because it's a start of battle buff, assuming it kills something, which it usually does. I mean, fig usually doesn't get something important, but if you've got a pet that uses knockouts, it's uh, quite handy. Here I, I take this tough decision to keep my two tempo pets, really, so I can stack into the future with my hippo. And my fig here probably saves the whole run there, stopping that uh, deer from using its chocolate cake, because a 10-10 bus definitely would have... I'm pretty sure it would have annihilated me. And you can see I'm, I'm barely sticking through breaking even against all these pets with only a level 1 hippo. And we actually never get the hippo to level 2, technically. But... We do get pugs, and I don't think I ever level up the pug either, but you see, I've got a nice uh, level... Actually, I'm curious, yeah, unfortunately... Oh, that's interesting. Sorry for the, the weirdness there, but the fig goes off before the pug goes off, so I assumed I'd get half the buff that the hippo would get, but the buff didn't go off until after the pug did, which is really interesting. I'll have to look into tempo there. And you can see here, I'm my mouse is shaking a little bit at this point. I'm really nervous. I'm taking Stinky Sock because now I'm shooting for the perfect game, you know. Uh, so I take the uh, Stingray for the Stinky Sock. I grab an Octopus because that seems kind of nice. You see another summon team. But this, this is a pretty strong summon team. But with the fig and the level 2 hippo, I'm gonna be able to once again sweep. And so after I take out this bus here, you'll see I'm onto the last round. And uh, if you watch my mouse movements, you'll see I'm very nervous. Um, thinking about just about everything. And what I'm gonna decide on is a, cl a clownfish, which is a, well, a cow and then a clownfish. If I hadn't gotten the cow, I wouldn't have grabbed the clownfish because I would have wanted to keep the uh, the octopus. But 
This is going to give us just a small buff at the start of battle when the hippo levels up. And really all I care about is hippo stats. You're going to see here a pretty scary team, but they don't have the attack that they need to win. And that is my perfect game in Blind Arena. And I'm going to pull up the next video and uh, yeah. Alright, so here we are into the next one, generating the pack and importing it in. Uh, this next one, it was a pretty interesting game, and for once I won't spoil for you how it goes. Um, one thing I do want to touch on is when I import a pack, I get to see a brief flash of what the tier ones look like, and I get to see the icon. And I'm very committed to like the fairness of it, so I bring this up. Um, I find... At first, I thought that'd be a problem and wanted to find a way to go, you know, around that. But thinking on it now, even if I use the random pack generator that Super Auto Pets comes with, I'm still going to have that same issue, so I don't have a problem with that anymore. And here we're off by one, which stinks, because now we're starting the game on four hearts. But this game actually goes pretty well, even though I would consider these uh, first two turns rough. Maybe not that rough. I get Hatching Chick, which is uh, a pretty fantastic pet to get. You see a 6-9 on turn 2 is plenty, even going against uh, Porcupine. Well, actually, it wasn't plenty enough. We lose here again by one. But um, my next level up here, which I'm not sure why I took here. Usually I would save for a, a tier 4 and a blind, but I get an Ox. And Ox is just a great thing to stack buffs on. It's one of those things where uh, it's a multiplier. So since it's given itself mel melon, it essentially means you're doubling the value of the attack stat that that has uh, until you're reaching things that could break through melon or unless the thing in front of it's getting sniped. But a 4-7 on tier f uh, turn 5 is probably not getting sniped. So yeah, we got a second hatching chick there too, as well. And I think next turn, yeah, I'm gonna beat these guys. I'm finally winning. Uh, I am gonna get the option for a third hatching chick, which I will save for a level up for a tier five. I'm gonna get a croissant on that because I know I'm gonna be keeping that. Uh, I'm wondering, I don't know if I should have had this beaver in front anymore at this point or not. But we beat a Jerboa team there. I don't want to see them in the future. Uh, Jerboa is kind of... It's kind of strong. And here I... I decide to uh, be a little crazy. I sell off all but two of my pets. I grab the Macaque, which is going to summon something to start a battle so I can run a four squad. And then I think it's just... I love having two open slots and having a free Platypus. It feels really good to get that absolutely free <laughs> two health. And here I'm really going to struggle. I want this buffalo. I want it so bad. But I don't know if it's good. I don't think it's good. I freeze it. And then I'm going to unfreeze it. Definitely pretty indecisive there. I'm actually going to run the three squad here with cheese on the macaque. I think that's more valuable than any of those pets I could have grabbed. But yeah, buffalo is a good... It's an alright pet. But I don't, I don't think it's worth taking in this scenario. It, it's already late for it. I feel like Buffalo needs to be grabbed the turn it becomes available. But I am going to get Manatee, and next turn I'll have a level 2 Manatee, which is really nice because of what I'm going to level up into. This Macaque has been great tempo as well. It's, uh... Yeah, I mean, it's the reason I win this round. And now I'm on to turn 9. Time for level up. Ooh, I can use that. And I get Leopard. Leopard is a fantastic thing when you have health-sided scaling. Um, it's not a pet I like to run into, I'll be honest. And you can see I make a mistake here. I'm running the uh, fox at the back for some ungodly reason. So my <laughs> ox isn't going to be able to uh, get a melon. And I think that actually loses us this round. You can see me wiggling my mouse. I'm upset at myself for that. But yeah, I mean, it would have traded with that flea, and I think the rest of my team could have done the work on the re the uh, others. But I, I fixed that mistake immediately. Level up my fox, and my fox is going to be my third scaler here. And it actually, it does pretty well. Fox is one of my favorite pets, just because it's one of my favorite animals. 
but I, I think it's a really neat gimmick, and with good stat foods, I think it's being able to get it earlier than Cat and having it free is pretty fantastic. You're gonna see here, we lose again, and now we're on to 1 HP. 5 wins, 1 HP, turn 11. Not a great position to be in, but you did something. This uh, orange is gonna hit exactly what we want it to hit. Essentially, I, I get some pretty good food hits here when I get these uh, randomly associated stat foods. Uh, so this orange here is going to hit the manatee and, uh, yeah, an ox, which is just great hits. The only things I guess I really wouldn't have wanted it to hit would be the fox and maybe the hatching chick, but getting the extra stuff on the manatee is great. Now, here we beat a lizard tail team, which does feel bad. It always feels bad when you're winning, but it's against people going for achievements. Um, obviously that's not really hurting that. And here, I think I make a mistake. I don't. I decide to keep the hatching chick instead of the leopard. And I think my idea was maybe one day I get level 3 hatching chick, but I, I think I should have kept the manatee there. I think it would have been much better to have double the attack scaling, even at the cost of having to keep the manatee alive. Regardless, we get a mongoose here, which is a great hit. I use that for peanuts. And suddenly I'm running a scorpion at the front, essentially. Which <laughs> immediately pays off. Uh, pays off in a big way. And my leopard's starting to do nice work. I've almost got a level 3 fox. Things are kind of kicking off. I give my leopard some cheese here because it's got a nice high attack. Not a lot of health. Uh, and equipment's always scary in these things. You don't know... Uh, what equipment you're gonna get, so it's usually best to just take some. Now here, I should have so so saved the waffle, or used the waffle on the mongoose. I didn't, I'm not punished for it, but then I save another waffle because what if I need another mongoose, which I probably shouldn't have done here. And you see, I get the extra mongoose and I don't unfreeze the waffle. You can tell the nerves are getting to me a little bit. A great hit with the pizza hitting the leopard that's doing a ton of damage per hit now, and we are on to uh, one health, nine wins. We've got uh, two peanuts at the front. This has a lot of potential, and I, I like keeping it secret here. This the drama of if I'm gonna win. I grab this leopard, and it's time to run in. Uh, who am I gonna face? You may ask. I'm going to face the Doom team. Just absolute most horrifying thing you can go against. Um, th there's no chance I was beating this squad, but it's still a cool game. <laughs> Unfortunately, you can see my disappointment in my mouse. But yeah, I'll pull up the next game. Hey, you're gonna see me importing this pack, and we're into the next one. Pacifist Crowd with the cricket icon. You can see this is another interesting game. I never know what to talk about during tiers uh, 1 and 2, so, at least tier 1. Especially when I don't want to just talk about the verdict of the match if I'm trying to keep some level of drama to it. But, you can see here, I get Chipmunk. Chipmunk's a pretty nice start. I think a lot of people have dissed on Chipmunk, even when it was first released of Golden Pack and it was a free food instead of a one-cost food. I think Chipmunk got a lot of unrighteous, unreasonable hate. It hates a strong word. He's like, yeah, this unit's not that good. I think it's pretty good. Being able to, what it really allows you to do, which you see I don't do here, but what it does allow you to do, is invest into foods on units you know you're gonna pivot off of, and then not worry about losing that investment when you sell it. I think that's a perfectly nice ability, especially with the multiplication of it, if it's like you want to later use it to get like a good food perk. But here, let's talk about that stilt and chocolate cake, which I put on last round. Chocolate cake is very interesting now with the fig update, which I'll get to. <laughs> yeah, I roll triple yaks there, and I don't even consider it for two seconds. There's few, there's few pets where uh, rolling triples, I won't pick it up just for the hell of it. But uh, Yak is definitely one of those. I won't get into the uh, the rabbit hole. That would be a star pack rework, but <laughs> Yak's not 
my favorite unit, to say the least. But yeah, um, this chocolate cake here on the stilt is quite interesting. I'm sacrificing, at this case I've leveled it up now, but it's a 5-4 unit that I am sacrificing to get plus 6 plus 6 on my golden retriever. So it's like barely worth it, but if it's sniped, it's... I guess if it's sniped, that doesn't really matter. You're going to see me holding a Jerboa. And that is because this is my own pack generator, so I know somewhere in this pack is apples. And I'm like, okay, maybe there's worm. If there's worm, that's fantastic. If there's owls, that's fa fantastic. It would really help if I looked at the little spinning thing that appears at the start of every turn. I don't do that. And actually, there was actual apple. I'm just noticing this now. You'll see, I noticed there's mouse there. I'm like, oh, mouse isn't good. <laughs> there's an apple on the screen there. I decided to forego Jerboa because I thought the only apple in the pack was mouse, fully missing the two apples right in front of me. It's funny what you pick up in a post-commentary sense. And although we're going like summons and chocolate cake and stuff, we win against this hippo. Actually, because it's chocolate cake, it doesn't get the buff, which is barely enough. The hippo doesn't get the buff from killing it. I'm talking real fast. Which is barely enough to carry us through here. You see I can get the level 2 uh, cappy save for next turn. I'm not entirely sure why I'm saving for next turn on turn 7. I guess I just want the extra unit actually. We save the two bananas because I can't remember if there's pill, which is a common issue. And this is going to be a theme right here. There's a lot of people running lizard tail today. I think there's in each of my games you see someone running lizard tail. That might, I don't remember with the perfect game, but um, there's a lot of lizard tail. And here we're going to see the backbone of my build, the shark. And I'm going to grab this cuttlefish. And shark is a great unit. I, I mean, I know that's not contested or anything, but being able to have also great math there with that bus. Being able to have what's essentially a 10-10, even if you're not running a summon team, if you put it in the back, is really nice. Um, it's just a great unit. But it can't run things on its own, which you'll see later here. I start struggling a little bit when my shark is my only real valuable unit for a while. I level it up, I get Orca, I'm super excited. Uh, Orca is just fun. I really embrace the chaos when it comes to Orca. The reality is there's not that many amazing hits that Orca can have, but it is way too fun not to run in most instances. And you're gonna see I get another unit that I consider very fun here in a second that I'm very excited to run. I win that one. Uh, getting Osprey out of Orca was kinda nice. We level up and we get White Tiger. White Tiger is a unit I always want to run. It's it's obviously tempo, but it's that weird kind of tempo where you get it late and then you're stuck with it on your team and you can't really do anything with it and you can't really get rid of it because it's just there. It's one of those units I'm always a little weary on uh, grabbing, but it is at a minimum fun. You see here I win this with the hits I get from my Orca, which I think I would have won regardless, but... Yeah, White Tiger is probably something you should try not to run that late, because eventually you could have just already had all that experience, you know? And so, it's just a slot that you can't get rid of. I I'm harping on it now, but... I do pull in Tapir here, and you see, I think my idea was if Tapir gets sniped, it could be a shark with stuff in front of it, and then I'd have two sharks, because at this point I'm desperate. I'm looking for a turkey, or a German shepherd, or a secretary bird, or anything that enables summons. At this point I would have taken a horse, because I know the trap I'm falling into, which is I have one unit that is at all decent and nothing else. Uh, since my uh, tape here does get sniped, uh, it becomes an orca. A little bit extra gold. And I win this one. And 
I was pretty surprised. I thought I was just gonna lose, 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 but I'm, now I'm seeing I actually have a chance here, which is all the more nerve-wracking. And so all of my, my roles here are very pained and scared and, oh man, I just want to find something that enables summons. The truth is there's nothing in this pack that enables summons other than shark. I, I could have grabbed a second shark. Um, in fact, that's probably what I should have done. But we get really close here. Um, Mole doesn't do anything, but we don't get it. Uh, I was just hoping for a draw there. We've got two health left, and here's my biggest mistake. I could have uh, swapped my tapir for a second level two shark. Instead, I put, I combine those, and you can see here, and in this whole series, I'm going to be pretty open about what I consider to be my misplays. And sometimes it's a misplay in a post-commentary sense. It's like, oh yeah, I guess I could have done this had I known X Pet was in the pack. But in this game, you see I make some pretty blatant mistakes. I should have run a level 2 shark. I should have grabbed that Jerboa, which I'm just now realizing recording this. But there's a lot of things I could have done, and now I'm stuck here with one pet that really gets stuff done, and then three pets that enable it, and out of total pain and shock and terror, I grab an egg in this trying time, and you can see my mistakes have mattered. I am not able to get anywhere with this. I do manage to get the ink on that squid, which is funny, but let that be a lesson to not only run one good pet. Yeah, um, with that, I'll get into the next game. All right, generating a pack here, and we're getting into our final match of this video. I don't know if I'm always gonna keep these videos to four matches, but at the time I decided I wanted to make this second episode, I had four matches that I wanted to show off. So I, uh, this one will have four matches. We'll see how the others go. Now, uh, it'll probably be pretty obvious as soon as turn three what my build will be. Um, but I'm actually going to grab arguably my most, my second most valuable unit I'll have on my team for the rest of this run, and that is the uh, Seahorse, which I think is generally agreed is a good tier one, one of the best tier ones. But I think people don't talk about just how good it is. Now, at the time it, it exists, it's kind of whatever. And you'll see I'll grab a worm here, and that's going to be very important here as well. Like at, the, at tier one, you know, changing up people's order might do something. I grab a sea turtle here just because it's a 2-5, and 2-5 is good stats. But seahorse is quite valuable late game, like, noticeably. It's like how Mosquito used to be really valuable, like, Mosquito is still kind of valuable. I think people have moved off of the meta of always have Melon, it's the best armor, but, so in that case, Mosquito isn't as good at Melon popping. But, yeah, Seahorse is something I can very comfortably take into the late game, in any game. And right here you're gonna see where this match is going. That's the Jerboa, and I have a level 2 worm, and you can see me spot the Jerboa, and that's the team now. That's gonna stay the team. Um, in fact, if it's not clear at this point, three of these units are already part of my final team. Now, Jerboa, for those of you who don't know, gives uh, the whole team plus one plus one every time it eats an apple, working twice per turn. This pet was notoriously bad until the Puppy Pack rework, in which Worm came out and yeah, I think Worm came with the Puppy Pack rework. Even though it's not in Puppy Pack, I believe it was part of that uh, whole process. Um, but Worm gives an apple every turn, and so does Owl, and suddenly this pet is way too strong, probably. A, a tier 4 that has the same scaling as... I mean, it, it's better scaling than a Bird of Paradise 
really, if you have the consistency for it. So, this is a pet that we can pretty comfortably say will probably be changed. Um, if you're running customs right now, I'm sure, at least in a few of my other games, in this video or my other video, you'll see I'm running into a lot of Jerboa teams. It is definitely one of the strongest strategies you can go. It's not like the strongest outcome you can have, but for how early it works, uh, it's pretty crazy. However, we have three wins on turn eight with Jerboa scaling. So the question here is, can Jerboa scaling function into the late game when late game scalers can actually uh, surpass it? Because I'm saying to be clear that level one Jerboa is better than level one Bob, in my humble opinion. Not that it is always better than it. And, you know, if you see a level 2 Bird of Paradise, I'd rather have that than a Jerboa in most instances. But, let's see how it does. I do feel dirty running this team in customs, but mostly because this is uh, a random pack and no one else knows that. They're gonna go, oh, this guy chose specifically to go Jerboa Worm. What a loser this guy is. This is the voices in my head talking at all times. It's just about how I ran Jerboa that one time. <laughs> but, uh, Jerboa's nice, but choosing to grab a gorilla all those turns ago and to keep this horse, the seahorse, on my team is really what's gonna keep this run alive. You can see, um,. I believe it's this turn? Yeah, I get the chocolate. I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get the level two something. Jerboa, of course. And this will just keep up my scale scaling. But you can see, getting this far with just level one Jerboa is kind of unfair. I mean, it's clearly unfair. And it's clear Jerboa was never meant to be this good. I think we will definitely see a nerf. Since it's a pet that's just customs only that everyone has access to. It's probably not something where they would feel that bad about changing its ability because it's not like anyone paid specifically to have your boa, you know? Whereas with other pets it's like, and this was the big talk during the puppy rework of, this isn't the pack I paid for, and my, my status on that is it's so much better than the original. Um, and there's a place for where Puppy Pack was, but I, I'm so much happier with the rework. But yeah, I don't think anyone can complain about a Jerboa rework. It's clearly too strong. I mean, personally, I think it'd be fun to have it give, like, maybe plus two plus two to a random friend, then two random friends, then three random friends every time it eats an apple. That's like... I feel like that's a better way to balance it. So now it's about building to have more apples rather than just having an apple every turn. That's a random thought off the top of my head, so feel free to roast me in the comments for that. But you see here, rather than my gorilla, I'm actually investing in my seahorse. It's questionable, but it's, I mean, I was gonna say it's valuable enough to win us this game, but we actually lose this one. Um, this is a about as good a summon team as you can get, really. That's not necessarily true. I mean, there's German Shepherd and all that, but... With, uh... Turkey. That's about as good as Turkey's gonna get. And... Am I gonna get the level 3 Seahorse? No. Even though I've been talking about it the whole time. Equipment's so important. Making the most value out of your pets. Now, Seahorse does really help here. Um, Seahorse is going to pull the tiger away from elephant blowfish and win this for me. I probably would have won anyways. But yeah, uh, that's my blind arenas. Thanks for watching.